So brazen uh, now. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me tonight. Um, as you know, or you may not know, because you have, you're going over your articles later on tonight, that one of the articles in front of you will be the design of the Park Street sewer, which uh, your board has previously endorsed as one of your goals to move forward. The Finance Committee. Can you pull that a little closer? Sure. That's better. Thank you. Hmm? Can you come sit over here? <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm all set. <laughs> um, so, uh, you sidetracked me. Okay, so there's an article in front of you for a Park Street sewer for uh, $800,000. Um, as you know, it's a goal of your board to move that project forward. It's the goal of the Finance Committee to move that project forward. Um, so we felt it was a, the right time to get this going in the right direction. So the uh, last few months have been quiet, but there's actually been a lot of work being done uh, by our engineering staff and our consultant clientele. <laughs> Uh, with me tonight is Dave, P Dave Peterson. He's the project engineer from Kleinfelder. Uh, Craig Horsfall, the assistant town engineer. And Pam McCarthy, our economic development coordinator. Uh, everybody had a, has a piece to this, this puzzle, if you want to put it that way. I'll get right into the presentation. Uh, Sharon, if you can tab over to the next sheet. So tonight what we're going to cover is um, a project overview, uh, some, some of the benefits from this project, we're going to compare the last time this project was brought forward, if you can remember, was in 2016. So we're going to compare some of the major highlights of that project versus where we are today. So the 2016-2019 project comparison. Uh, there's a technical part of this presentation that we'll go over. There's a financial model. Uh, we're going to go over out some possible sources of outside funding for the project that can kind of help the town out with uh, getting this project funded. We'll have some recommendations, and we have a, um, an approximate schedule for the project. Next slide, Sharon. So an overview. Since 1963, there's been actually nine studies done for sewer, either town-wide studies or just sewering studies in general, Park Street sewer studies. Um, you know, various companies uh, perform those studies. 2012 was actually when we we really started focusing on Park Street sewer pretty, pretty hard. Um, the previous town engineer, Ben Fian, started an initiative to uh, start looking into it. And um, I kind of picked that off when Ben retired. Uh, we, we, we came in front of the, the board at that time around 2015, 2016, to um, present a project, uh, a town meeting design project for um, $800,000 for town meeting. The problem was the project was about $13.5 million at that time, and the betterments were going to be through the roof um, for the residential people along that way. So I think everybody understood that the project had a need, uh, had an environmental need, and it actually gave the town an economic uh, boost to the, to the tax base. But at the end of the day, it hurt, it hurt everybody's pocket because of the, the betterments. Um, this presentation will establish, you know, back, back then we established economic benefits. Um, we looked at new betterment policies and regulations to try to make this as cheap as possible for some of the residential users on the strip. Uh, and then we actually were forming some new sewer connection policies. Uh, so people who just, for example, if you just put a new septic system in, uh, there would be a grace period when you could tie into the sewer. Um, we've also recently we've completed an alternatives analysis and we evaluated the cost benefit over a 25 year life cycle. Next slide, Sharon. The next, the next slide is a is an excerpt from that 2016, uh, I'm sorry, 2015 sewer priority plan that we did. So prior to coming in front of your board in 2016, if you can recall, we did a, a sewer priority plan in 2015 because um, Park Street sewer was always considered number one priority, but we could never put our finger on why. It was just our opinion of Park Street's number one. So we looked at it. Sewering, sewering the town on a town-wide basis. So there was about seven areas we looked at that didn't have sewer. Large areas, not necessarily that one side street that doesn't have sewer, but the larger areas that didn't have sewer. And Park Street ranked number one. We had criteria in that study, for example, things like you know wetlands, high groundwater tables, uh, poor soils, all that kind of criteria got rolled into the environmental side of the study. And then also we rolled in a, an economic um, 
benefit portion of that study, which looked at the, the tax base. So if you provided sewer to an area, for example, Park Street Sewer, an area that has a, um, an industrial park, for example, our, our assessor has gone on record saying by providing that park sewer, you're actually increasing your tax base after about 10 years by, by a million to a million and a half. So that we felt if, 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 there, if there was an economic benefit back then, uh, that that project should get some more points too, as opposed to a project where if you did provide sewer and you didn't get any benefit from an economic standpoint to the tax base, you'd get lower points. So Park Street, in summary, Park Street ranked uh, number one. In 2016, this next slide, Sharon, uh, shows the, the total project cost. It was $13.5 million. Uh, the project had 26,000 linear feet of gravity pipes, uh, 7,900 linear feet of force mains, two municipal pump stations. In the yellow area is the scope of where that project was. If you flipped over to the current project, next slide, Sharon. Uh, as you can see, and you'll see further in the presentation how we came about to the 9.8 million. Uh, the, the, the new cost is $9.8 million. So the project went from 13.5 to 9.8, and there's various re reasons why. It's not that we're providing a cheaper product, it's just that there's new technology, we're thinking out of the box, there's different ways that we, look, we looked at this. Uh, the blue area, as you can see, is the new project scope area. Very similar to the one in 2016, but a little different, and we'll get into details later on into the presentation. Next slide, Sharon. So this, this slide shows the comparison of the two projects. So the, um, the green, I guess you want to call it, that green color, is the 2019 project. There's actually yellow underneath all, most of that green, but then you can kind of see where the yellow is overlapping um, past the green. That represents the 2016 project. So in 2016, what we did is we were trying to be diligent where we're, all the side streets in the area, you know, we were going to put sewer down it. As you can see, like in the nor northern part of this project, um, there's a lot of side streets. Um, we we're going to put sewer down those side streets. Uh, the southern part of the project also, we were going to run gra a gravity main all the way down to the Brockton, Brockton line, put a municipal pump station, and then pump it all the way up to Lion Lumber Road. Um, what we've done is we've scaled that project back, and we said instead of sewering all the side streets, let's get this, the trunk lines in, let's get the sewer in. And if somebody, if, if, a, if a residential neighborhood wants to put sewer in, they can always petition town meeting to put sewer in. So if there's only two people down that street of the 10 people that live on the street that want sewer, then you know that probably that petition would not pass uh, town meeting. And that's fine, but if there was seven out of 10, well maybe that petition would pass, but they can bring it forward like anybody else in town can for a, a sewer article. Let's get the trunk line in there to give them that option to get sewer to their property. Um, we also are considering a low pressure design. So for example, a low pressure design, we'll get into the details later, but it's a different way of looking at sewer. Instead of having a big, deep municipal pump station, you can have a, a smaller pump station on each property with a smaller pipe that comes, comes out um, and is at a lower elevate, uh, you know, not as deep of elevation as a, a, as a municipal pump station. So in the end of the day, a private person can buy the pump station. The town's not buying the pump station. The, 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 the user's buying the pump station. You have a smaller pipe. It's not as deep, and it's um, cheaper to build. So for example, if you had a municipal pump station, you have a deep sewer line coming in, say, 8 or 10 feet deep, going to that pump station, maybe deeper than that. And then you have a force main coming up higher than that, Smaller pipe, maybe a six inch pipe, blasting all the way up to line Lumber Road. So you have two pipes, very expensive to dig that deep. There's probably a lot of ledge in these areas. So with things like low pressure sewer design, you can keep one pipe in the road, a smaller pipe, and all the pump stations, there's smaller pump stations on everybody's lot, and they are responsible for maintaining those pump stations. Uh, by doing this, um, we've reduced the construction cost by $3.7 million with these kind of considerations. Uh, we've also considered flow to Brockton in this, this option. We've actually, I actually had two meetings with the mayor and his team uh, to discuss uh, sewer uh, going to Brockton because the idea behind that was if you can just keep on going to Brockton, you can get rid of, rid of one of these municipal pump stations and a whole force main. So um, 
Long story short, behind that was those conversations resulted in, well, if, if you want to connect, then we have to sell you water. And then you have to do all these upgrades across Route 24, and there was just these projects, a, a lot of infrastructure upgrades we would have had to do. And seeing where we're going with, with water, from the DPW standpoint, we're going to be self-sufficient very, very soon, it seems, that it didn't make sense to buy water from Brockton. Plus, buying water from Brockton, complicated issues, because when you're buying one type of water, and you're mixing it with our water that we treat, there can be issues, and you might have to do some water treatment for it. Um, and we already, we've already mentioned that the, the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee um, now endorsed this project uh, publicly, so that was a, those are also changes from 2012. I'm going to hand over the, the technical part of the presentation to Dave Peterson from Kleinfelder. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know if you can, <laughs> can't hear me or not. Um, I guess if we could just get some help advancing the slide. Um, thank you. So uh, yeah, technical. It's not going to be that technical. We'll just, <laughs> it's still going to be pretty high level overview. Um, you know, we've been helping since about 2015 on, on these various you know studies, um, and so we we really are excited because we're kind of bringing all the various components together to a head, and we feel like we've you know found the plan that um, I think satisfies most of the unanswered questions and, and really gets us to a point where we're you know we're pretty satisfied with it. Um, so on the technical side, uh, we studied the Park Street sewer area, um, looking at different ways that we could um, potentially install sewer, um, and with the, the primary goal of um, reducing capital costs, as, as Mark already indicated, um, we've cut a pretty big percentage of the original cost down. And um, second, we introduced the idea of looking at this um, project from a 25-year um, cost-benefit analysis, so not just what are the capital upfront costs, but there's going to be O&M um, charges that the town's going to have to um, incur to maintain the pump stations. There's going to be um, sewer revenues. There's going to be tax benefits. So we want to look at all of those holistically and really understand which um, of the alternatives um, really presents the best outcome for the town. And this, this kind of dot matrix here just sort of identifies the six alternatives that we looked at. Um, without looking at the, the actual figure in detail, because um, I think we might all get a headache. Um, really, it's just there's six alternatives, but it's really just three all things we're looking at. Number one is phasing. Um, do we really need to design and construct the entire project in a single phase, or are there natural places where we can break it down into smaller sections? And that would allow us to potentially um, do the construction over different years and kind of spread the costs out. Uh, we also looked, as Mark indicated, going from MWA discharge location or Brockton. Um, our studies in the past, we never really looked at the Brockton option. We kind of considered that a non-starter, but uh, I think we were challenged, and rightly so, by, by the town to really look at that um, hard and understand whether that is a viable option or not. Um, so we did that in this past study, and, and we have some information about that. And then Mark also talked about um, low-pressure sewer um, as a you know technology alternative. So uh, we looked at that in, in versus conventional um, so I'll just describe briefly on a following slide what, what that is. Um, but I'll start with um, phase implementation. So on the next slide, um, oh, you're on the next slide. Um, so we're using the term phase uh, 1A, 1B, 1C. Um, the number one comes from the original um, priority plan study. This was study area number one. Um, phase 1C is really a, a, a connector gravity sewer um, that goes between Ash Street and um, Haynes Road along Park Street, and that's really necessary to get to the town's existing collection system. Um, and then phase 1A and 1B um, are the lower Park Street um, along that major corridor, and then 1B sort of Campanelli and Turnpike. So you can see um, on the figure sort of how those lay out, um, you know, um, sort of diagrammatically. There is a sort of greenish colored square at the southern extent. Um, this really is a, an opportunity to um, cut the cost back even further that we sort of introduced just recently working with the town. Um, you know, we don't necessarily need to bring the public sewer all the way to the city line. We could really stop it um, short. Um, and the way it's shown here is we would actually ha stop it in the vicinity of um, the golf course. And um, just as Mark had explained, you know, a, a side street owners could petition to add um, sewer um, on their own, you know, in, in the future, 
the same story could happen there. So for the time being, we've considered taking that. Um, it's about 1,500 feet along Park Street um, off of the, the project for now. So these are, th these, these are three sort of obvious uh, ways to break the project up. Um, again, it spreads out the construction costs over time. Um, side streets don't necessarily have to be included at day one. They can be petitioned for later. Um, they're, on the negative side, you know, we do lose some economy of scale. Um, certainly, if you have a contractor on board um, to construct the entire project, you know, you might get some, um, you know, better unit prices, you know, just generally for installation. Um, if you do phase this, potentially if, say, phase 1A, 1C are done under different construction phases, um, there may be some additional permitting or concerns that um, DOT would have with respect to opening up Route 27 in, in two construction contracts in a relatively short period of time. Um, you know, that might be, you know, that can be overcome, but certainly we just wanted to identify that. Um, and then loss of sewer revenue. So if you're going to uh, be pushing one of, you know, one or two of these phases out further in time, um, we're losing some just opportunity in time opportunity to recovering um, sewer revenues um, for the town. Um, in addition to that, I guess any tax benefits that go along with that. So, um, so that was sort of a high level overview of um, the phasing. On the next slide, just a, a diagram basically of the difference between conventional versus low pressure sewer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I just don't want to get into a lot of detail on, on this. I just thought enough information just so, so everyone can sort of imagine what the differences are. But a, a conventional system would be um, your plumbing from your house just will flow by a, a pipe that's slightly sloped and it'll just go by gravity into the public way uh, and then it'll go to a public sewer. Um, at local low points in the collection system, the town will likely have a, a pump station which will then convey that to uh, a high point. So that's your conventional, you know, every, everyday run the mill sewer system. A low pressure s system, I mean, Mark explained it already, um, basically each individual home would have its own grinder system. Um, there could be cases where like a large commercial retail or industrial property uh, might require larger than just a, a simplex uh, grinder. There could be a duplex, even a quadplex. So you got, these, these pump stations could get rather large. Um, and I, I do want to note that all of the costs that we've been looking at um, for this study, we don't really look at the, pub, the private side, um, what would be incurred um, by the individual homeowner, property owner. So if they need to come in and purchase a, a pump, control panel, all the valves, you know, the force main, get that installed, um, it's, that's just an added cost after the you know, public portion is, has been you know, constructed. Um, so, I, so that is something that um, needs to be thought of. And then the third piece was the uh, discharge location, whether we continue going to MWRA um, or to Brockton. So the, the next slide shows um, pros and cons of each. Um, in terms of the MWRA side on the left, um, the town is really already signed up for MWRA. There's already an existing account. And when that account was established, um, MWRA had reserved capacity for all of Stoughton. So even though all of Stoughton was not sewer at the time, um, there's capacity um, available for the entire town. Um, so there's really no concern about um, you know, growth of the system. The permitting you know, with the MWRA is pretty straightforward. Um, the MWRA has available capacity, and um, so that's not really a, an issue for this project. Um, we would be um, keeping more sewer users um, in the Stoughton system, you know, rather than going to like the flow going to the Brockton system. And in terms of local capacity issues, um, you know, the, the town's collection system is adequately sized. There are some upgrades that are um, kind of being planned outside of even the consideration of this project, um, which will benefit flows here, but um, certainly the, the local system um, is adequately sized. Um, the biggest downside is at that Brockton town line, the southern extent of phase 1A, uh, we would need to construct a, a pump station and a force main to convey flows uphill. Um, so, it, so that is not free. I mean, those pump stations are, are, not, are not cheap and that's a long force main. Um, so that's the major con, I guess, on the underbury A side. Um, for Brockton, um, Brockton also has ample capacity at its wastewater treatment plant. We actually were questioning that about three years ago when we were thinking about it, but um, the dust has settled with their, with their permit and they, um, they do have ample capacity. They actually um, sold some additional capacity to Abington not that long ago. Um, the, um, 
the, because there won't be a pump station in Forest Main, the overall capital cost would actually be a little bit lower to go to Brockton. Um, and that is within the, the confines of the town of Stoughton. Um, when we get to the cons, I'll explain some, some other elements there. Um, and then we'll only have um, one fewer pump station for the Brockton options. That's another pro. On the con side, um, the city of Brockton's collection system, so while the treatment plant has capacity, they have some capacity issues in um, what's called the Cashman Interceptor. Um, working with the city of Brockton's DPW and, and their wastewater consultant, they identified that to us as an immediate concern. So there's a, a sewer pipe that crosses underneath Route 24 that's been known by the city to have capacity issues and it would need uh, to be upgraded. Um, that's a project that they haven't moved ahead with um, because it's very costly. Um, they, um, their consultant has looked at it um, at a very high level and they have not put together a cost estimate for that um, or anything too specific um, beyond just a high level study. Um, but we took a, Kleinfeller took like a really high level look at it. We think that the cost would be in the neighborhood of, you know, one to two million dollars um, to basically trenchlessly jack a new sewer underneath through 24 there. Um, in addition, as Mark alluded to, uh, Brockton is, would be asking Stoughton to purchase water. Um, the, the agreement would obviously be part of a negotiation. <coughs> um, I didn't attend that meeting, but my understanding is they were looking for a one-to-one. -one. So for every, every gallon of sewer that um, goes to Brockton, they would want Stoughton to purchase one gallon of water. Um, our study, when we're looking at the, the life cycle costs, we, we made a, an assumption that we could negotiate that down to a four-to-one ratio in Stoughton's favor. Um, but nevertheless, that's water that Stoughton doesn't really need to be buying. Um, there's also some complication with, uh, as Mark ind indicated, when you bring Brockton water into Stoughton's wa system, there could be some intermix issues um, with the chemistry of the two water sources that would need to be looked at and studied and considered. Um, Stoughton has a interconnection already with Brockton. There's a, um, a booster station that increases the pressure in the Stoughton system. That would need to be upgraded. Um, we didn't study that in detail, but we allowed for um, a half a million dollars for just an upgrade to that station and, and the ancillary pieces to that. So, so while I say that there, the costs um, on the Brockton side is, is cheaper, there's these additional considerations that really weigh heavily into the overall, the overall consideration. Um, beyond that, um, there are schedules to be considered. So, you know, intermunicipal agreements, um, between the city and, uh, and the town of Stoughton, you know, it could take years to really come to the, the right um, terms and conditions and, and um, uh, just agreeing on all the, all the parameters. Um, so there would be a considerable delay than if Stoughton retains full control of the project. And then uncertainty of future user fees. So, um, you know, Brockton certainly would be the one who is, you know, dictating the, the, the wholesale rate, you know, to, to Stoughton. So, um, so a lot of quite, you know, a lot of questions, um, you know, just visually, you can see where we're heading with um, our kind of findings on this, but I'll, I guess I'll hold you in suspense for a little bit longer on that. Um, so, I, so on the next um, slide, we're actually going to start talking about the financial model. So this is the life cycle cost evaluation. Um, we picked a 25 year, um, basically term. The, um, the reason being that um, any sort of construction cost bonding, um, betterments, if, if there are any, would be paid off, you know, within 25 years of the project. Uh, the infrastructure that would be going into the ground would have a life cycle of much longer than 25 years, but um, we just wanted to bring it to a time period where, you know, all those retiring debts and stuff were, were dealt with. Um, so on the cost and revenue, um, you know, I guess balance sheet here, uh, we considered the construction costs. Um, operation and maintenance costs specifically with pump stations, um, so that's personnel to go in on a daily basis, check the pump stations, um, do all the maintenance that you need to do um, um, to keep them up and running. We looked at both comparing what MDBRA would charge Stoughton for additional um, sewer service versus what Brockton would charge for additional sewer service. Uh, we looked at the cost uh, for the Brockton to charge Stoughton for water. And then, as I've alluded to before, the improvements in Brockton's system for uh, wastewater and then the, the water booster station as well. So those are all sort of on the cost side. And on the revenue side, our, our model was looking at um, um, betterments, um, sewer user charges, so that would be for you know, actually using the, the sewer system, and then um, tax levies. So um, 
there's a real potential um, that's been established, um, you know, I think in 2015, I believe, um, by the, the assessor that um, this project has the real opportunity to grow the tax base by uh, more than a million dollars a year um, annually. So that's, we, we accounted for that in the overall eval evaluation. Uh, what we don't have is there's an opportunity to offset some of the construction costs with um, construction grants and loans with a variety of programs. Um, actually, Pam's going to talk specifically about um, two of them that the town has already looked at um, in, in, to, in detail. Um, and there are a couple more that, that she'll talk about. If you can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> So two years ago in 2016, um, we actually looked at Chapter 23L as a um, potential financing mechanism for the um, project. It, at that time, it was a fairly new legislation. I happened to know the, the person that wrote the legislation, Hal Davis, who was actually a consultant who worked on other things in this community. And um, we decided to educate the public about this, this potential option. Um, Chapter 23L was a, a program that had to be initiated by a citizen. It could not be initiated by the town. And actually, it was initiated by a citizen, by Paul Carter. Um, he actually had done a great deal of legwork and had been involved with trying to move this project forward for several years before we even got to this point. But Chapter 23L, at that time, now it's a few years old, it was new legislation to help fund infrastructure projects. 100% of the property owners had to establish a development zone that could, that could actually contain non-contiguous properties. Um, then that development zone would have to be approved by the Board of Selectmen, but it did not have to go to town meeting. It provided the owners long-term tax-exempt bond financing and the local municipality at its option could dedicate some portion of the new property taxes to debt service. Um, there was a specific exclusion of any financial liability or cost to both the municipality and the Commonwealth. Uh, the bonds were funded by mass development and were paid back by betterment liens on the benefited real estate um, by 100% of the property owners. Uh, so what happened was uh, this, this petition was initiated and this map that is up there shows the number of property owners that signed the petition and showed the desire to actually be a part of this process. So there are close to 300 properties in the project area and on the map you can see that only 45 people signed the petition showing the desire to move forward because basically they were agreeing to, to put a betterment on their properties. Three commercial um, property owners signed on, four industrial property owners, and 38 residential property owners. And it just was not financially feasible because 45 property owners were never going to be able to finance a $13.5 million project on their own. So that's basically why that, that project failed, um, trying to use Chapter 43, 23L. The other thing that I attempted to do was a year ago, Mass Development um, came up with a new program called the Site Readiness Program. This was done um, in a joint effort with the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. And the reason this program started was because um, major companies were coming to Massachusetts looking for industrial sites. And the state actually lost several large companies to other states because we just did not have industrial properties that were large enough or developed enough to be able to accommodate these, these um, companies. So the, the program was really meant to either improve existing sites such as the Campanelli Industrial Park to make them ready for such development or to improve vacant land to make it ready for, for development. <laughs> So we actually were encouraged at that time by Mass Development to move forward with this application. They thought that it would be a good project. Um, we actually applied twice. We applied once looking for funding for the, the construction part of the um, project. And then we applied a second time just looking for money for the design. Um, they came out, they did um, site visits, and they, they, they seemed like they were really interested. But in the end, I was told that the state decided that 
they didn't consider a sewer project to be a priority for this program. At least that was the case at the time. So we did, um, I worked with Mark to, to get these applications in. It was a good amount of work, but in the end they didn't work. So those are two things we tried. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. <coughs> so um, we, we are still able to look at some other options. Um, I think that this project is a good candidate for a Mass Works grant. Um, I've actually been in contact with Mass Works already. Um, I should be speaking to the program manager, Nathaniel Thomas. Um, we keep missing each other's calls. But um, usually what happens if you can prove that a project is going to have significant job creation or significant housing creation, usually with some affordable units in the mix, it's um, a priority project for the state. Um, if you look at things that have been funded in the past, um, there are projects that seems like are, are receiving funding from between one to two million dollars, projects of this size. So I think that um, we could potentially get that much money in assistance towards this project. Uh, what we have to do is, is determine the, the timing of it. MassWorks likes to come in towards the end of a project to help finish it. They want to make sure if they're putting their money towards something, it's, they're not putting it towards a project that's not going to happen because this project, it's a grant. It's not um, a bond, something that we have to pay back. So this is something that we're looking into. Um, and I, I think we do have a good shot. And what we will have to do, though, is we'll have to um, work with a consultant to prepare the MassWorks application because it has to have um, design. I have to double check. I think it's at least 50% of the project has to be designed before you can submit an application. But I'll confirm what um, amount of the design has to be completed. And um, th therefore, we need a consultant that can handle the design aspect. Um, I, I know we have to still make that decision, but I do know that Kleinfelder has worked on MassWorks grant applications in the past. Um, the other thing that um, you should be considering is whether um, there'll be the, a capital article. The town may choose to fund up to 100% to reduce betterment since townwide benefit will be realized from the expanded tax base. So 100% of the funds equates to approximately $700,000 per year over a 20-year period. Um, the other thing that you could look into is um, the town may assess up to 100% of project costs with betterments to all properties serviced by new sewer. Um, so those are things that you might want to look at as a mix. You might want to try to look at different financing options and combine them. Um, I also uh, talked to Mass Development today. They have a new um, rep that works on um, different types of projects for the town of Stoughton. It's um, Robert Dolan. He's the VP um, of Investment Banking for Mass Development. And even though we weren't able to get funding through the site readiness program, uh, Mass Development showed a willingness to, to meet with the town and see if there's any other types of ways that they can assist us to move this project forward. So um, we are looking at alternatives so that even though we've gotten the price down from 13.5 million to less than 10 million, it is possible that we'll be able to lower that price even further to make the project more financially feasible. All right, um, thank you, Pam. So I, we're gonna just uh, wrap up. I have just three, four more slides. Um, so the next slide actually shows that 25-year um, life cycle cost analysis results. And um, without getting too much into the, the weeds of the, um, you know, what all the, the numbers are, but the, the red bars are basically the cumulative costs, the green bars are the cumulative revenues, and then the purple bars are sort of the net. And we ordered these left to right from, you know, the most beneficial to the least beneficial. And as it turns out, or what it shows, is that the two alternatives we looked at that were 100% of the, the new wastewater is generated, discharged into NWRA, falls to the left-hand side, meaning most beneficial from a financial perspective. Uh, the two Brockton options fall to the far right, which means they're the, you know, the least attractive from a financial perspective. Um, we looked at alternatives where there's sort of a, a split, where like one of the areas goes to Brockton and one goes to Enderbury, and those fall in the middle. Um, so, so t 
to, to us, clearly the NVRA discharge location is, is much preferred. Um, also worth, worth mentioning is um, conventional, you know, from our perspective as, as engineers, we prefer the conventional approach moreover than the um, low pressure sewer. Um, generally, we don't see, you know, widespread low pressure sewer systems being installed on, on you know, a massive scale. They usually reserve for smaller developments and, and things like that. Um, the, the cost burden to the homeowner, you know, once the, you know, public portion is installed for them to buy the grinder, install the force main, um, they'll be in charge of maintenance and operation of that, you know, for the rest of its existence. Um, you know, just is not a, um, a, a burden that's, you know, we typically like to see, you know, the public system's perfectly good at handling all that with, you know, little to no maintenance um, from the owner. And then in terms of phasing, um, you know, there's an economy of scale. There are some advantages and disadvantages to phasing, as we talked about, but there's certainly an economy of scale, putting it all together at once. I think at a minimum, uh, you know, we should plan to design the whole project at once and then, you know, depending on what MassWorks has available or, or other funding options, um, there's at least that flexibility to either build all of it or just build some of it. Um, so our recommendation would really to be to, you know, proceed with designing the whole, the whole project as one. <coughs> Excuse me. So the summary of recommendations, you know, again, um, discharge to Envy Beret, um, we prefer conventional sewer and we want to design all three phases at once. Um, that in summary is what we call alternative one in our study. Um, I do want to mention, so we're planning to have a public forum on January 16th that's really going to um, go through, you know, the similar presentation, but there's going to be other elements um, that we haven't talked about tonight that we can dive into a lot deeper um, and we'll have a much wider audience to, you know, ask questions and, and um, you know, try to gain additional support. Um, another recommendation would be for us to move ahead and appropriate the, the design um, at this upcoming town meeting. Um, there have been some um, betterment policies and sewer connection policies that were updated in 2016. I believe they're still considered drafts. Um, so I think looking at those and getting those, um, you know, incorporated would be um, a recommendation that we would look at. We also want to look at um, other con construction funding options, as Pam already walked through, and then also looking at zoning. Um, so Noreen, I believe, is working with um, OCPC to look at um, highest and best use um, for, you know, different zoning in the area. So that's something that, um, you know, I think the town and the town planners looking at currently. So, um, and then just the last slide is uh, really just kind of an outline of schedule, some of those recommendations and activities. Um, so we're really trying to gear up towards um, town meeting and then um, converting that into actual design work starting in the summer. Um, design we would expect would take a year, um, you know, potentially longer if um, you know there's some unknowns that are discovered during design that lengthen the schedule. Um, this schedule is also predicated on um, self-funded, so if, um, if MassWorks um, grant becomes a possibility um, or some other sort of funding, <coughs> excuse me, funding program, you know, that might change some of the milestones and, and time frames a little bit. So this is sort of a preliminary schedule. Um, certainly um, permitting um, the zoning research, funding research will happen sort of in parallel with design. Um, and then, you know, there could be a town meeting appropriation as early as 2020 um, for construction if, if the town is at that point. So I think that really summarizes it all. It took a little bit longer than 25. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> um, so I guess we're available for questions. Yeah. I'm going to, um, my civil engineering friend to the left has huh. been making notes, so I think I'll go to him first, except um, the one and this is really not substantive, I would ask you to do. Would you anticipate a snow date for your January 16th public forum and put the snow date alternate date out in your material so that if it gets called off, we don't wind up wondering when it's going to happen next. If we're on a drive to get information out and feedback in, uh, and if we think we're going to a spring town meeting, it would be important to not l lose the opportunity for weeks that it would take to re-promote the event. Yeah, but let's start with you, Mike, if you want. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dave is actually a, a former co-worker 
uh, of mine. So. So you disqualified? You can't. No, you can't no, I, I'm still qualified. So it's good to see you, Dave. Thank you for your presentation. Sure. One quick question. I'm going to be quick because I know there's a lot of people here waiting tonight for uh, license renewals. But um, this proposed cross country uh, that looks like it's on one or two parcels. How, how does that work? Do we need to negotiate with those property owners for um, permanent easements? Yes. Yeah. I mean, basically, um, that would be looked at in detailed design whether we actually need that. But just based on our, I guess, preliminary understanding of topography, there's sort of a low point there, and it would naturally flow through a back, a back lot down the Campanelli Way. Um, but yeah, you would need to negotiate um, some sort of permanent easement for that sewer there with the property owner. So, so acquisition costs for that easement, would that be outside of the realms of the 9.8 million that you provided in the presentation? Would the town, that it would be in excess any acquisition? Yeah, our, our estimate doesn't explicitly have a line item for that, but it does carry, we do have a 25% like contingency. So I think that would fall in that 25%. Um, typically when we get into like a final design stage, we'll take that 25% contingency, we'll reduce it down to you know, we recommend a 10% contingency when you're actually at construction phase. Sure. Uh, but certainly, I would think land acquisition would fall in that 25% at the, at the time being. Yeah. Just to pick up on that, if I could, Mike, um, we, there's, there's a couple ways to handle that. The, the ideal situation would be a gravity, an easement for a gravity main. If, if some, for some reason or other we couldn't get an easement, you could, again, the thing, the thing that low pressure works well for is a development, like a subdivision, which that area, Corbett Road, is. So you could actually do a low pressure design for that, for that area and pump it up to a manhole that would be at the Campanelli intersection and that would flow down gravity to the, to the uh, municipal pump station. A couple of different ways to get there. Obviously the first way is the, the priority. And then just one other quick question. I'm, I'm, I'm confused a little bit about your study areas from 2016 to now. So if you look on the, the sou southern portion of the map, some of those parcels that are closer to the Brockton uh, border, why were those parcels excluded from the 2008, or excuse me, 19 study? I mean, basically goes back to the goal of trying to reduce the overall capital costs. Um, you know, there's, these are large parcels, right? So um, you need a lot of sewer in the main road to serve a fewer number of parcels. So your overall, I guess, cost efficiency for number of new accounts to the, the sewer length is, goes down. Um, you know, so certainly this is an area, as, as market indicated, could be served by a low pressure sewer system. Um, you know, if, if they wanted, they could also kind of like RK Plaza did independently decide that they want to have a Brockton connection, that could be something on the table for them, you know, as a, a consortium of owners. Um, but really the number one reason, I think, was just to try to get a scope um, down to a, you know, a, I guess a capital cost that we thought was a little bit more manageable um, than we were at uh, two years ago. Yeah. Pick up on that, Mike. Um, it's a good question because um, that last part of the, that last yellow pot's about 1,750 linear feet. It's an estate highway layout. <laughs> and it, that area actually planned originally for a municipal pump station near the Brockton line. So you got that deep gravity main in the middle of a state highway layout, and then you got a force main again in a state highway layout. A lot of construction, probably pay, they'll probably make you pave curb the curb on that. So the way we're looking at it is if somebody needs sue in that area, we don't want, it's not like we're forgetting about you. We're actually looking at it as we're giving you the opportunity to tie into sewer now because now the sewer is pretty close. If you fall in the middle of that yellow area, you could option of going to, to Brockton, 750 feet, or going north, another 750 feet to, um, you know, to, our, to our system. So you have the ability to tie the sewer if you choose to. Mm -hmm. You can do a low-pressure system. If, you, if these people hire a contractor at their own will, it's actually going to be probably one-third cheaper for them to, to do that work than if we actually did the work ourselves, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because we have prevailing wages and things of that nature. Um, if you took, if you added that yellow area in, it would add a million bucks to the project. So you could go from 9.8 to 10.8. So you know, it's not a huge increase, but uh, I think there's a stick of shock. Something so when you get below that 10 million dollar number, there's a kind of a stick of shock type of okay. thing going on. And then just in terms of your financing models, like in your experience, what are you seeing other communities doing for large scale sewer expansion projects like this? Are you seeing, you know? 
50% betterments, 50% debt, or, or, or I guess what's your experience in some other communities for a project this size? My, on, my only one uh, recent experience with a project this size, um, it was 17,000 feet of sewer, so it was actually very comparable, three pump stations. Um, it was 100% paid by betterments. Um, I, we don't see a lot of, you know, you know, Kleinfelder doesn't do a lot of new sewer systems of this size. I mean, just here in the Northeast, um, most of our areas are already sewered, and we're looking more at, you know, maintenance and upgrades and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think I think Betterments is certainly an approach that most towns would be would be using, um, you know, but offset hopefully by you know some sort of outside funding that we can get access to. Sure. All right. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. Sure, Mike. It's good thank seeing you. you. Anyone else? You have a couple of questions. So thanks for the presentation. It was very, very informative. Um, and, and I'm sorry, but I do have some questions. So I'm on slide four, and it talks about benefits. And one is um, revenue increases. It says less than a million dollars. Is that in uh, taxes and property taxes? Yeah, so that's in reference to um, uh, Mr. Gibbons' uh, assessment. So basically looked at um, the potential for increased land value and, and tax assessments. So his, I think his analysis was actually in excess of um, one million per year. Um, oh, so it's, it's equal to a greater than? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm just confused by the... There you go. So wouldn't that pay for the project? It's certainly a, a stream that can be looked at, yeah. So I did a revenue projection on a 13.5 million cost. The debt on that would be all under, just under a million a year, 9.8 million. And I did that with our uh, external financial services group. So I mean, doesn't that answer the question right off the bat about financing? Rhetorical question, but just to think about it. Um, the, um, after 10 years, uh, Mr. Tisa, you said it would be kicking off about 1.5 million? It's between one and 1 1.5, according to Joe. That's after 10 years, so it's not one point, it's not 1 million to 1 1.5 off of day one, it's after 10 years. So that's because you're not paying the, the bond off anymore. And was owed, let me ask you, where is that coming from? Why after 10 years are we going to be realizing net profit there, what does that mean? So I think initially you're gonna get the impact of increased property values, but then you're gonna get higher and better uses in these areas, along with some rezoning. If you rezone things, so refer, I mean, it's probably a horrible example, but maybe it isn't. Instead of an industrial warehouse building, you're gonna, you could get a hotel in one of those lots. So there you go, so you got an increase in your tax base because you got a different use on that property. Okay. Have we done an analysis on what water and sewer revenue projections would be with this new um, project in place? Uh, not, not at this point. So that would be another additional revenue, net revenue um, enhancement, right? Right. So, so we're go where we're going, we're going to be self-sufficient with water, according to our DPW, because they've been putting a lot of work and effort into that, that system. If you had a, a hotel, for example, um, something that uses a lot of water, you're actually kind of doubling your, your benefits. You're getting that increase in the tax base because of the hotel, and then you're actually selling more water. So you're kind of like, you know, double whammy. Well, it would be a net, a net revenue. I mean, it, yeah. you know, the whole target, the whole goal of the water and sewer program at this point, particularly water with the water treatment plant coming online, is to be able to separate ourselves from MWRA, which is very high cost water. Once that's done, um, the profitability in that system will be better, which will help pay the debt in that enterprise account. You know, currently we're using TIFs to supplement water every year because of the debt of the MWRA entrance fees and the construction bonds. If that was eliminated, I proposed a while ago that we use the TIFs just to wipe out those costs. Now we've saved that expense, which could then be another way to pay off the debt on this project. Um, I guess my point is, is I've got at least three ways at this point to pay it off without a betterment or a townwide increase or hit to the, um, to the debt. Um, 
have you, when you're doing the project, do you use Chapter 90 money? And if yes, is that considered into the $9.8 million cost, or is that an additional savings to the town? To answer your question, no. At this point, Chapter 90 is not assumed to be used. But if you drive down Campanelli and look at their road condition right now, it's a public road. It needs to be re redone. So you could certainly justify the use of Chapter 90 for maybe some of the paving work in the industrial park. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't, we wouldn't use that for um, the state highway layout portion of the project. Well, the state highway. Is there any? So that would be the responsi responsibility. Is there any way the state will help us with that? It, it's something we would need to explore. Yeah. yeah. So there's another potential to reduce the cost of the project. Um, I'm just not understanding why we would be even considering flow to Brockton at this point. Um, I don't know if there's a cost benefit that's been penciled or paper done on this saying, you know, but I can't imagine for the life of me that there's a cost benefit to, to go into Brockton, particularly when they're going to make us buy water that we don't want to buy because we've just separated ourselves from having any outside uh, uh, need for water resources. They, they were not going to push away from selling us water f for this project. So. On slide nine, uh, the phased implementation, why wouldn't the Campanelli Park be the first phase of this? Or do you have to do um, Lower Park Street as a first set? See, to me, I'm almost like, we're talking about phases. To me, it's really one project. Because you got, you got businesses on that strip, on, on, I'm forgetting what the name of the phase is, but not the Campanelli phase, uh, that need sewer. Right, so to just eliminate eliminate that section from from, from this project and, and phase it, I don't think it makes sense. I think you, if you're going to do this, you do them both at once, and it's one project and done. I would agree. You just want to get it done because the big opportunity down in Campanelli is to expand that park and to add more businesses. But right now, it's so limited because people don't want to move there because of the. the you get the one contractor situation. in there to do it right one time. It's going to be cheaper. Yeah, we had all those folks come to us from down there for the petition to put sewer in there a long time ago. Almost there. So those are repetitive questions. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, and I think we've got some more pencil to paper to do here. I think there's a way to pay for this without impacting ta taxpayers or ratepayers or homeowners or businesses. Ms. Howe. No questions, thanks. Mr. Cavey. Thank you. I only have a couple of questions, and it's really just to, um, to help me understand, uh, make sure I've got all the facts straight. So uh, there's, there's only a handful of questions that I that kind of no, that I might take away is the, from, from your presentation that it looks like you're trying to solve, right? You've got where are we going to send the waste? I know. Um, how, is, how are we going to send it there? Um, who's included in, in, this, uh, in this project? And how do we do it in a way that we can, we can afford it? Um, as far as, so um, just to get us to the very end of the presentation, when, when you um, made a recommendation that it be conven both conventional and also uh, MWRA, uh, that kind of tells me a lot of, of, gives me a lot of information about the answers to these questions. You, you think that, that uh, you know, where are we going to send it to? It's, gonna, it's not going to be Brockton and MWRA. How are we going to get it there? And we're going to use this conventional method. Uh, the reason why um, I just want to make sure I understand um, the, the answer to the other two questions, uh, which is how do we do this economically, but also who's going to be included is that based on slides five and six, where you kind of lay out the 2016 proposal versus the 2019 proposal, uh, I'm assuming that the 2016 is the conventional method, right? It's listed as um, gravity sewer, force main, pump station. And then 2019 has the, the, the um, uh, gravity sewer and pump stations, which I think is the, that's the, the low pressure. Am I right about that? Yeah. 2016 and 2019 are actually designed the same way. Okay. Um, we, we, we've just explored the use of low-pressure systems. Uh, there's other alternatives that we looked at that did use low-pressure systems. Okay. okay. Yeah, was, uh, the only reason I ask is, is with the conventional method, are we still looking at the, um, from slide six, a, a $9.8 million cost? Okay, perfect. That's yep. all. And, and so the same uh, scope regarding the neighborhoods. So there's, there's, we're not looking at the scope from 2016? Yeah, you... I mean, what it comes down to is you're just not sewering those side roads. Yeah, okay. 
Yep. Cool, cool. I just want to make sure, I, that was my understanding. I just want to make sure I, I got it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Any question I could have had has already been asked other than the request. And I'm sure we will get more into this when we, when we move down in. So thank you very much. We're not going to do uh, questioning from the audience on this. Um, there will be a further presentation on this as we get further into town meeting. And if and when there's a warrant article prepared, I anticipate we will do what we did for the special and have a hearing on warrant articles before they get inserted to get public input and on where we should go. Well, and then there's a public information session, right. at least on the 16th with a snow date. That's great. Chilled in. Chairman? Yes. I don't have a question. Well, then, I, well, please, Ms. Walsh. Ms. Walsh. On January 16th to have a really big map with our addresses on it. There's no use coming to a meeting and screaming and yelling about betterment costs if your house isn't even in the year because they've scaled this back considerably. So there should be something. I know they won't have costs per household, things like that. But people have a right to know if it's going to affect them or not, certainly from my seat. I mean, I can spot my property, it's 10 acres, but a lot of the people that assumed it was coming their way, it's not going to be. And there's no point in getting them all upset if they're not going to be affected. Dave, can you do that for the 16th? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving on.